Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw that there was a big discrepancy between the actual temperatures recorded and those that were predicted by well over 100 temperature models. So, why are they so different? Well, one of the reasons is because the cause and effect may not be quite what it is that we think it is. For example, any increases in the carbon dioxide levels may indeed cause an increase in the temperature, but that should increase the water vapor in the atmosphere, which then would, would cause additional increases in the temperature. And perhaps that model doesn't quite work the way we had hmm. predicted. But then there is this other thing that everybody does seem to agree upon. Let's say there's no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at all, and there's no contribution to the heating effect because the lack of carbon dioxide. And now we place 20 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. From our models, we realize that that already accounts for half the greenhouse effect of the current levels of carbon dioxide. That's kind of interesting. We don't quite agree on how much that first 50% is. It can be anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 degrees increase in the temperature of the lower troposphere. But we do realize that the first 20 parts per million already have or contribute half the greenhouse effect of all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that is actually quite exciting when you think about that. A very small amount of carbon dioxide, 20 parts per million, have an enormous effect on the change in the temperature. But then as we start increasing to 40 to 60 to 80 and so forth, even doubling from 20 to 40 only has a relatively small effect on the temperature. When we go from 20 to 40 parts per million, there's only an increase of about 0.3 to 0.5 degrees centigrade. And then for the next increase of 20 parts per million, the increase then goes down to 0.2 to 0.3, and the next 20 parts per million, now we're down in the 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 range. So you can see that adding additional carbon dioxide seems to have a smaller and smaller and smaller effect. It's that first 20 parts per million that account for a full 50% of the total effect. So what happens now when we go from 285 to 400? Well, again, the exact change we're not sure of. Apparently, our climate models are not correct because we are diverting from them. And so maybe even then, these predictions that we have here are even greater than they actually are. The contributions might even be smaller. And therefore, going from 285 parts per million to double that, 570, which may be something we might reach by the end of this century, the increase in temperature may actually be rather small, and therefore the feedback mechanism would be much smaller than we had predicted as well. And because of that, we do see, seem to see that divergence between the actual recorded temperatures and our temperature models. And so this may be a big part of that, that we're actually not quite putting the correct amount of contribution of increases in the carbon dioxide, and therefore models are beginning to diverge. But certainly, if there was no carbon dioxide, it would be quite a bit cooler. But you can see that the immediate effect of adding just a little bit of carbon dioxide is much greater for that part than for any consecutive increases that we're currently experiencing. And it may be then why we are seeing the temperatures versus the model differentiation. That's probably why.